Hello, my name is Saman Razavi, and in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a new framework for robust, efficient, and comprehensive global sensitivity analysis. This new framework is called VARS, which stands for Varigram Analysis of Response Surfaces. A little bit of introduction. So we all deal with models, and these models receive different inputs, parameters, forcing data, boundary conditions, and so on. And then they respond to these forcing and inputs and produce, uh, produce some outputs, smaller response. So in a simple way, the response function of a model can be, can be represented by this simple notation. Z is, a, is the model response for simplicity here, scalar value, which is a function of thetas, model parameters. And these model parameters can vary across the parameter space. So the response function represents a response surface in the parameter factor space. And I'm here showing a simple example, a simple conceptual one, with only two inputs or two parameters, theta1 and theta2. So we can see for different values of parameters, we get different model responses. We typically want to characterize these responses surfaces, and sensitivity analysis can be quite helpful in that. Sensitivity analysis can tell us the role and impact of each individual parameter on the model response, the z variable. But sensitivity has a clear definition based in partial derivatives only when specified locally around the nominal point in the parameter space. And obviously, such local sensitivity analysis provides only a limited view of the response surface. And it varies for different locations. So we frequently need to globalize such a tool to characterize the properties of the response surface across the entire parameter space. Probably the most intuitive way of globalization is to sample derivative information across the parameter space and combine them. Then technically, we would be dealing with probability distributions of local sensitivity for each individual parameter. So it's common to, to use first moment of these distribution, uh, distrib distributions and sometimes the second moment as well, as uh, the global sensitivity matrix. One problem with such an approach is that these PDFs, even for this simple function, are quite complex and the first two moments may not uh, sufficiently describe uh, what we're looking for. And the, uh, the distribution functions shown here are the actual PDF functions for the derivatives of this response surface. The other very commonly used approach to describe global sensitivity is the variance-based approach. This approach recognizes that the model response values can be described by a probability distribution having a variance, and this variance basically represents the total uncertainty in model response. The idea is to apportion this total variance or total uncertainty to each individual parameters. The philosophy of the approach is as follows. What if the exact value of parameter theta1 was known? Then you could fix theta1 at the true value and that means you would be reducing the parameter space to cross-section of this response surface. So you would get a new conditional PDF with a new conditional variance. Then you can calculate the reduction in variance, which is the total variance, minus the new variance. So this tells us about the impact of this new information. Now theta 1 is known. We can reduce, in this case, uh, the total variance. And we can do the same thing uh, for different theta values. So if we knew the theta was uh, located somewhere else in the parameter space, we could do the same, take the cross sections. And obviously, then the change in variance could be different. And even in some cases, for example, for the last one on the right, then by uh, adding this new information, by 
knowing the exact value of theta 1, we would increase the total variance in the model response. In other words, you would increase the uncertainty. So that's the paradox really there. But coming back to the idea of global sensitivity, what we can do, we can average the impact or change in variance for different values of theta 1. So by doing so, we take expectations in that equation, and then what we calculate is the main effect of theta 1, which is the average impact of theta 1 on, model, on the uncertainty in model response. Again, like the derivative-based approach, such PDFs, even for this simple function, are quite complex. And the variance may not sufficiently describe what we're looking for. And again, the, the PDF functions shown on this slide are the actual PDF functions uh, for this particular conceptual example. So with that intro, we'd like to outline two major challenges with sensitivity analysis. First being ambiguous definition and characterization of sensitivity. Different methods define and interpret global sensitivity differently. And that is why they lead you to different and conflicting assessments of sensitivity. Second challenge being the high computational demand required for sensitivity analysis. Basically, you need to, mod uh, to run your model many, many times to get reliable and stable results. So that can computational cost sometimes might be prohibitive. To explain what I mean by, by ambiguous definition of global sensitivity and how we have addressed it, I'm giving two examples. Suppose we have a response surface with this cartoony form. So in one direction, you have a nice quadratic form, and the other direction, you have the piecewise function with two uh, flip part of the previous function sharp. And on the right, you see two cross sections of the response surface. The question now is, okay, how is the sensitivity of Z to theta 1 and theta 2? Both the derivative-based and variance-based approaches tell us that the response is equally sensitive to both of the parameters. But are these two cross sections any similar? Probably not much, but the two approaches cannot differentiate them. So here is a second example. Again, a cartoony conceptual function. In one direction, again, we have that nice quadratic function, and the other direction, we have that quadratic form augmented by a sinusoidal uh, fluctuation. So, and you, on the right, you see the cross sections. Blue parameter, theta 1, is significantly more sensitive according to the derivative based approach. And obviously, that's because there is a lot of sharp slopes across the parameter space. However, according to the variance based approach, they are equally sensitive because the variance of the two functions are identical. So with these examples, first and second, and a third one that I didn't talk about in this presentation, we can show how the assessments of the two approaches can be conflicting. In addition, what is being ignored really by these methods is the structure of the response surface. There is obviously some structural differences here and there, and they, but they haven't been accounted for by these approaches. To address these challenges, we have developed a new paradigm or approach using the variogram concept called WARS. This is actually a new framework that encompasses the existing approaches under the same umbrella. And as a special case, it reduces to derivative and variance-based approaches. VARS stands for Variogram Analysis of Response Surfaces. 
A major weakness of the previous approaches, as I talked about, is that none of them considers or accounts for the specially ordered structure of the response Z in the parameter space. In other words, they ignore the fact that the response values are not randomly distributed throughout the parameter space. Unlike those, worse or varigam analysis of response surfaces is based on the recognition that there is a specially continuous correlation structure to the values of Z and hence to the values of its partial derivatives. So using pairs of points on the response surface WARS constructs the variogram and covariogram functions. A variogram is a function quantifying the variance of change in response as a function of distance in the parameter space. So h is a distance vector between two points. Covariogram function also quantifies the covariance structure in response as a function of vector h. So for an n-dimensional model, we get an n-dimensional variogram and an n-dimensional covariogram function. Worse then extracts a directional variogram and covariograms and uh, use it for global sensitivity analysis. Back to the example one. Here is the response surface as n cross-sections. On the right, you see the variogram surface of this function and we can get the directional variograms out, as shown in the bottom. So how do we interpret these in terms of sensitivity? It all boils down to the definition that the directional variogram represents the rate of variability or sensitivity for the direction of parameter i at the scale represented by uh, vector h. So we have different rates of variability or sensitivity on the plot for different perturbation scales. So I'm referring to that, that distance as perturbation scale. Far to the left on the variogram, you see that the two functions are almost the same or exactly the same. And that's what we got out of the derivative-based approach. They are equal. And far to, far to the right, the two functions uh, get together again, and they are equal. And that's what we got out of variance-based approach. And elsewhere, in between, blue is higher. So this suggests that sensitivity, first of all, is a scale-dependent concept a reality that might have been ignored previously. And at the two endpoints, you get exactly what you get out of the previous approaches that we talked about. So here is the second example, and the variogram surface and the directional variograms. The very first thing here to notice is that the variogram reflects the structure of the response surface. So you see that the that, that, uh, multimodality in the cross-section in the directional variogram for the blue direction. Far to the left, blue is significantly higher. And this is what we got from the derivative-based approach. And far to the right, they are equal. The same as the results of the vari uh, variance-based variance -based approach. So variograms give sensitivity information across the full spectrum of scales. But for a comprehensive metric for global sensitivity that includes everything, we can integrate this function and calculate the area under the curve. And that, that is referred to as integrated variogram across a range of scales or IWARS metrics. So a little bit more on that. There is a clear theoretical relationships between Wars and Sobel variance-based and Morris derivative-based approaches. These are typical directional variogram and covariogram functions. On the x-axis, you see h, which is the distance between points, or scale, or perturbation scale. The vertical axis is variogram or covariogram value with a unit equivalent to variance. For small h values, 
gamma approaches to the derivative-based sensitivity matrix, such, a, such as what Morris tells you. Elementary effects. For large H, gamma approaches to total variance of the response FS, the variance of the process, basically. And with some math, you can calculate it you can calculate Sobel total order effect from varigram and covarigram functions through this equation. So WARS bridges the gap between the two approaches, and in the middle it provides a little more information. The proofs of, uh, proofs of these uh, derivations are available in the papers that we've already shown. WARS is highly efficient and statistically robust, even for high-dimensional problems. So, it has been shown that WARS is at least one to two orders of magnitude more efficient than alternative sensitivity analysis methods. But why WARS is highly efficient? The high efficiency is partly because WARS is based on information contained in pairs of points, rather than individual points. And the number of pairs geometrically increases with the increase in the number of points. Let me give you an example. Suppose in a two-dimensional space, we have five points. These five points give us 10 pairs. Now, if we add another point, having six points, it would result in 15 pairs. In general, number of pairs grows as n s squared when n is the rate of increase in the number of points. So we get so many, many pairs out of just a handful of points. Okay, this is my last slide. Vars has been developed in the form of a software package. Here is the information of my website and the information of how you could get the package. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you very much for watching this video and I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you have any interest or suggestion, thanks very much.